let's get the facts straight. No. You may remember from a few videos back that Aislinn and September mentioned in their police reports that they reached out to the patient advocate over at the Panama City Beach VA clinic and got info about Mike. They made some pretty bold claims that would essentially throw their supposed source under the bus. The VA vet center and the veterans healthcare clinics are separate yet connected entities. While they are both part of the veterans administration, they cannot exchange client patient information without a release of information form signed by the veteran. The VA vet center has no such release from Mike for obvious reasons. Yet these women claim they obtained his information from the patient advocate Heather Kennedy. Aislinn and September haven't shown themselves to be very credible sources of information. Mike reached out to Heather to hear her side of the story. Panama City Patient Office. Heather, how can I help you? Hey, Heather. This is Mike. I'm, I called you earlier, left a message. Yeah. I'm sorry. I've just been busy. How, how can I help you? Yeah, I just, I just had some, some questions. Um, we, we, somebody is, is saying that uh, a couple weeks ago, on March 7th, that the patient, or not the patient, the, uh, the vet clinic, or no, what is it, the vet center, that's right, the vet center in Panama City uh, called you and that you gave them personal identifying information over the phone. That's not true. I actually denied giving them personal information over the phone because that's a privacy violation. Yeah. They did request it, though. Okay. Well, um, according to them, and they put it in a, a sworn statement to the police, they're saying that you gave uh, a patient's first name, last name, telephone number. I did not do that. Okay. Well, I did not. Just, yeah. I, wouldn't, I, I would not do that. But I, whatever I have to do to... I mean, they can write whatever they want in a sworn statement. You know, people lie all the time. Yeah. But I didn't do that. And I actually, there was a, there was someone that messaged me um, asking me if I knew anything about a, um, a, a disability coordinator. Right. And I said, what is this in reference to? Because you've asked me a lot. So I kind of thought it was in reference to you. And okay. she did. She told me that Michael Nelson called. I said, well, I am familiar with him. <laughs> So that was that, and then there was an incident I've seen that occurred. Yeah. That provider, that same person called me and asked me for your, uh, can you please give me his address? I said, no. Yeah. No, I cannot. Okay. So that, that is what happened. Okay, I mean, I, I tend to believe you, um, just based on my interactions with, with these individuals. They've, they've proven to be untruthful. Like, I mean, there's video evidence showing <laughs> what, what they've done. Yeah, and there so was, I would not have handled that situation like they did. No yeah. way. Well, that, so I, I can send you the statement if you want. I can send it to you uh, in an email and so you can see what they said. They, they not only said that, but they said that you told them um, to call the police should I show up. No. I said, she said, well, he asked if we had police. Yeah. And I told him no. Should I be concerned? And I told her, he's never been a threat to us. Yeah. But if you're ever feeling unsafe from any veteran at all, you shouldn't hesitate to call the police. And that's just a general statement. I mean, that was not in reference directly to you, but I, I did tell her you have never been threatening at all. Yeah. And she, uh, I didn't think there was any reason to do that. Yeah. She did say that. that that's in her statement, too. So, like, it's conflicting, right? She said she said that you told her that, that, I, that I've never been a threat. And she also said that you directed her that if I showed up using my devices to call the police, that, that that's a specific s sentence. And so, I mean, I'll forward it to you so you can see what what she actually swore, you know, under pain. Yeah, because it sounds like this is going to end up being a big deal. So, yeah. if I guess, I guess if I'm included in this, I need to know what's, what's been said. But yeah. I'm, uh, oh my gosh, well, what a mess. Yeah. But no, I, I did not tell her to call the police. I wouldn't have done that either. Okay. I just advised her that if they ever feel threatened, that they should call the police. Not necessarily if Michael Nelson arrives, call the police. That is yeah. not what I said. Well, it's crazy because, um, like, I called from this number, and this number shows up as anonymous to you, I'm assuming, because it's uh, like an encrypted number. <laughs> and that's what I call government if I, unless I have an appointment. If I have an appointment with a doctor, then I use my... My other number that's on file, um, and that's the number that somehow she has, and she claims that you gave, 
when I never used that number to call her. I've so. never given her a phone number. Yeah. So I mean, so that so some somehow she's got that somewhere. So she uh, whether she got it from you or from somebody else at the VA, um, we don't know yet. We haven't been able to figure that out. Uh, she did say. What else did she say? Um, goodness. What is this person's name? Because I can't even remember. Ace Aislin, Yeah, Aislin Thatcher. She's one of the the counselors Thatcher. there. Yeah. I wonder if that's. That is not even the person. September Sims is is another counselor, and she was like the interim director. The uh, Tim Stabell is the director, and he was on leave. So how do you spell that person's first name? Aislin. Oh God. Uh, I'll I'll forward you the 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 statement that she made, the sworn statement. I think it's like A I S Y L. It's it's difficult. <laughs> yeah, I have to, I have to pull it up and uh, send it to you. But because um, that name doesn't even sound familiar. Yeah. So, like, if that person wrote that report, I only talked to one person, and that's not the person I spoke with, mm. I don't believe. Okay, yeah. Cause so that's, that's even even worse. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like they're they're doing what they can to try to, you know, CYA for them. And, unfortunately, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're throwing you under the bus. Uh, and oh, no, I did talk. Okay, I found a message. Yes, it was her. And I have proof here that says... <laughs> um, that uh, she asked me, she said that, you know, they were, they needed your information. Could you send me his email address and phone number? I won't be able to do that was my response because that could be a privacy violation. Yeah. And then she asked again and I said, I wish I could help, but me accessing his chart for that information would be a violation of his privacy. Yeah, that, they've, so, been, they've been really pushing me. They've been really pushing me to get me to sign a release of information so that they can try to access yeah. stuff. And and I said, well, as long as this lady is working there, like uh, September Sims, like I'm not going to sign a release with you guys. Like this is no. Mm -hmm. And because not only does she file this false police report for Lynn Haven, she then uh, a week later filed another one um, where she lives over in PCB, and and that one had. First name, last name, uh, and information. So I, again, I don't know where they got that. They they may have confirmed it because the day before, on the fourteenth, I went back and actually met with uh, her boss to do the enrollment. And he took, you know, he had my VA ID card and took down my information. Um, so so they actually, you know, verified it <laughs> in person. And then the next day, she makes another false police report. So I don't know where they got it in the first place, where they got the name uh, or phone number. But they they're claiming that that you gave it, and they're claiming that you told them to call the police. And um, yeah, so it it it's not good, <laughs> and it it doesn't seem like they're doing anything. I've I've tried to talk to their head director. Um, who is it? Tim Virgilio. Like he's down somewhere in Middle Florida, and. And he's basically basically giving me the the same response, like, uh, he he kicked it up the chain, and they're trying to figure out what to do. And it, it, it's sad because it, it seems like the response is has been to kind of cover it up and protect the the employees rather than admit, hey, yeah, we made a mistake, we need to make this right. And um, you know, I I don't want to press charges against her, and I won't, like, you know, be, uh, even though she's she's the one that committed the crime, like, I want to try to handle this as peacefully and administratively as we can, you know. Uh, uh, but yeah, the, the, I keep, the sentiment is not the same, right? They they have doubled down and and are are making false police reports and swearing under oath and all this stuff. So, your name came up uh, in this last records release that we got yesterday. So that's why I was trying to get a hold of you to see if you were aware of this, and I'll, I'll forward it to you so you can see for not, yourself. Yeah, I, we haven't really been involved. Um, I actually was contacted by our disruptive behavior committee officer because a couple reports of the incident from them were submitted through our system and she was like to my knowledge the vet center is not because they're not they're separate yeah they're not employees of ours yeah so her she was like how did they even access she thought i put them in i said i didn't put these in yeah so I, that was another thing she would because people are just familiar with you and i talking because i'm your advocate so i was the first person that she thought would have put that in and i didn't yeah. know yeah so um i'm sorry that uh that that you saw that, but I did not do that. I promise. Yeah. And I, I'm pretty. I feel pretty good because I'm like I'm really glad that this is in writing <laughs> because if I am, I, hopefully if I'm if I'm called to, called to testify for any reason, it'll be yeah. short and sweet. So I'll be like, uh, here it is. Yeah. I was asked twice, and I, you know, responded that I would not give it. Give it. So. 
Yeah, I, I mean, it, it makes sense. It falls in line with what we're getting from them, like, really pressuring me to, to sign this release of information to get stuff from you guys. Um, the other thing, I just remembered the other thing they, they, they claimed was that you told them I was under an, uh, an invest, some kind of legal investigation with the VA. No, I wasn't. I didn't tell that. Sorry. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I did not, I did not tell them. I, I, okay, I'll be honest with you. So you've asked a lot of questions about yeah. our Section 504 coordinator. Yeah. So as and, – and I actually, I, I don't think this is, would be any problem of yours. I had to do my due diligence and go through every channel I could right. to verify the interpretation that you have of that policy right. according to what the VA is responsible for. And I went up to um, the Office of General Counsel yeah. and submitted all your questions, and I told her – that if he asks these similar questions, these are the responses that I can send you, the responses I've received from the Office of General Counsel. That's <laughs> not an investigation. That is a, so like, yeah. because I think it's good for everyone, to, like you said, everyone should know how to respond to your question for yeah. accommodation. Right. Okay? So that was all that I said, and actually... I have that in writing as well. Great, great. So, yeah, that's that's what I guess. Yeah. I, I literally, uh, before calling you, I, I had this conversation with my wife. I was like, you know what? I, I bet Heather relayed to them um, that I, I've i asked these questions not just of, of you but of other providers in the VA. And I know f not, not just from you telling me but from other providers telling me, yeah, uh, like for the BRC, they've said that they've had to ask the general counsel about some things with Section 504 and and – and so I know that that conversation is being had, uh, you know, from, from you and from Which other sources. probably what you would like to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm let's, guessing let's... that's the intent of the question. <laughs> yes, let's make sure that, that, that the VA is following the law. Yes, that is the intent, you know. <laughs> yeah, but, but, right. but, but more, I guess more to the point, it's not just following the law, but making sure that we do whatever we can to not discriminate against veterans and to provide adequate service and and like law be damned, you know, I don't think there has to be a law saying for you guys to do that, you know, or any, anybody in the VA specifically saying, hey, you have to give accommodations. I think that's just uh, a, a human thing to do <laughs> for people that have disab disabilities, you know. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, that's, that's what I, that's what I uh, guessed uh, when I, when I talked to my wife about it. I guess that, that you probably mentioned that, that you've relayed some of the Section 504 concerns to legal and, then there's been an ongoing discussion about that, and they probably heard, "Oh, legal investigation," and <laughs> and that's what they told the cops. So, oh man, I'm 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 scared. So I'm I'm just to to tell you, I'm scared. I've got an appointment Tuesday, um, and and they moved. They told me they moved locations to to not the one I think that you're at, but the other uh, annex and PCB. And I'm scared that this is an ambush. Um, that that they are going to try to Baker Act me or, or arrest me or something for trying to go um, get services, you know. And so, so they asked you to come to the Magnolia Clinic? Yeah, yeah. Well, what, who, what, who are you meeting? I, I'll, you know, I can look into it for you. Who are you meeting with? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, a, it's a counselor at the vet center, but they, uh, his name is Brian Gray. Oh. Brian Gray. And they, they, he told me that they moved. They closed down their location in uh, Lynn Haven on Minnesota mm -hmm. Avenue. And I said, well, why? You, why? <laughs> and he said, oh, it's because of, we've been getting a lot of calls from people that were angry from the uh, incident and, and a lot of calls going to the National Call Center. I'm like, yeah, that's people redressing their, their grievances. That's the First Amendment. Like, and, and he's like, yeah, it's, but they're temporarily located at the, the annex over there in PCB. So, so um, and it's not the R. Jackson location. No, it's, it's, that, it's that, that. No, you're right. I think it's R. Jackson. I think it's that one. Okay. I mean, that's. I really don't. I don't think that you have anything to be worried about. You probably have certain. What what it probably is, is because maybe because of the incident, they're like, okay, the vet center. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's because they don't have a police presence there, and they yeah. don't. But yeah, because I raised that question too. Um, I, like I raised that question yeah. there. You know, I think you probably saw the video where I told the cops, like, hey, do you, do you even have jurisdiction here? You guys are local police, and this is this is. Mm -hmm federal property <laughs> and they still think that they can i think i think we once we get the body cameras back i believe i overheard the the sergeant which was a one of the scariest things i've heard a cop say um but he was he was laughing and joking with the ladies and he said something like i've got jurisdiction wherever i go i'm like that's 
That's terrifying. That's <laughs> not the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, wow. but that's but that's the mentality that they have, and and I've they've confirmed that they don't have a a written agreement with the VA or the federal government for jurisdiction. Uh, that they're just yeah. op- operating under assumption that just because it's within city limits that they can go and do whatever they want, and um, maybe maybe they've got direction from maybe the vet's clinic or vet center got direction from uh, from legal saying yeah you know what they don't have jurisdiction and, and for it for you to have law enforcement coverage um the under the va police does patrol like where your location in that what is it r jackson or whatever that is that that location yeah yeah so well when is your appointment tu- it's tuesday uh at, at what is it noon at noon okay yeah. so are, do you have anyone going with you is it, are you going to go by yourself? Yeah, no, I, I have, I think, one guy that said he'd accompany me. Um, he's, he's an acquaintance. That I've, I've, he's given me a ride a couple times. Um, so I, I don't know. Well, I don't know him that well. Do you have well. a good relationship with the, is it a therapist? I think he's a, I think he's a counselor. I, I believe he's... Um, so you haven't met him before? No, we just talked on the phone one time. Yeah. Um, but I thought I would just be there just if you needed some support. Yeah. Um, do you want me to um, reach out? Um, I may have an administrative officer that's over there. Do you, I mean, is there anything we can do to make it more comfortable for you when you come to your appointment? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess do the opposite of what they're claiming you did <laughs> um, for the seventh, you know, try to try to. Tell them not to call the police and not, not to uh, you know take my assistive technology and to um, yeah treat me like a normal human being. That that would be nice. So if if, <laughs> if you do, if, I know. Okay. Well, I'm gonna talk to our to make sure that our our police officers understand the severity of the situation. I'm not. I I have never really noticed that our officers here do anything without some type of flag, which. The, the only thing that I, we might have is, like, that you're a blind veteran. Yeah. Um, there's no behavioral flags because there have not been no behavior reports that I'm aware of. Um, so there would be no reason for them to ask for any type of identification or check-in. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't anticipate that happening, but I can double-check to make yeah. sure. Yeah. So there is no additional issues when you arrive for your appointment. Yeah, and if you could do another thing, I don't know if if you can find this out because I know that the vet center is separate than like the what is it the VHA, but but they they're wanting they've gone back on their word again. So initially on the phone with Aislinn, uh she said for proof of service you can bring in a DD two fourteen or a veteran's ID card. And so I brought in a veteran's ID card. Um, you know. And didn't get service the first day, obviously. The, when I went back a week later, Tim looked at my veteran's ID card, got my information, did the enrollment, um, and he asked for social. I gave him my last four. And and then h- him and Brian called me for the to set up the appointment. He's like, hey, we need your full social, and we need a, a copy of your DD-214. And I'm like, well, that neither of those sound right to me. Like, like I've, I've been enrolled in the VA for like a decade, um, yeah, and... And I always give last four because I've I've been enrolled, you know, and and you already said that the uh, ID card works for proof of service. So a- again, it seems like uh, a trap to me. It seems like an ambush. So. And that was that was to register for an appointment with the vet center. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they share, and that's why she was asking me. I think for your information, right. Like, you're enrolled here, right? But they may need your full social for full enrollment. But I can't. I, I can. I can. I can see if I can find out. Yeah, yeah. I can contact someone else at another vet center and yeah. find out. Because I mean, he got he got you know full name, date of birth, um, and that information. I I, I might bring in a DD two fourteen with like the um, the first part of my social redacted. You know, have my wife black it out or something. But it it just seems. It doesn't seem right, you know. It doesn't. It doesn't smell right to me. And um, what are you? Uh, what are you um, afraid of for them? For the vet center to have your full social? What is it that you? 
Uh, just more retaliation. Like any any information that they've got that I've given, they've given over to the police. You know, um, and even 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 information that I didn't give them, right? They they claim that you gave it to to them uh, for for full yeah, name and, and and phone number. Um, but then the you know that's that's in the police report with Linhaven, the police report with uh, PCB. She doesn't say where she got it. She just says full name, and that's the day after I gave it to Tim. So, I I'm guessing that she talked to Tim and got access to the, the, the document that he filled out for me, um, which is just disgusting to me that she is touching anything that I, has to do with me. So. Well, I am really sorry that all that happened, and it's, it was a little bit, I mean, there's, <laughs> it, there, they definitely um, did not act appropriately. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to not know how to answer questions sure. and to be put on the spot. Um, which is kind of what you do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean that I, I see you've got you have a platform there for sure, but that I did not see that in the videos that yeah. I saw on TikTok. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I saw a lot of other stuff. Yeah. I, I never I never ask questions to like to get a gotcha. Like I ask genuinely trying to find out. Hey, do you know about this? Are you aware of this? And if not, I, I try to have an answer for, for you. Like, Hey, I have this handbook, you know, I can give it to you. This is what I know. Like, mm-hmm. you know, what do you know about this? And, and I try to, I'm trying to help the system work. Uh, there, there's actually, uh, Christina, my wife put out a, a video yesterday that you can check out. It's on, it says something about like, what is it called? Like the secretary, responsible or i think i think that's the title but it, it talks about um parts of the handbook you know that she 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 highlights that um were definitely violated on the seventh and and but it, i mean it specifically lays out what is assistive devices are well, and, just and, like shutting just shutting the window on you yeah and being yeah. like we know about you you're the youtube guy yeah like i was like oh my god yeah like i i was really shocked um but we we hadn't done anything I saw that. yeah we hadn't done anything on youtube in like 10 months <laughs> and i think i think the only thing that was posted from this area was the 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 one where i visited your guys's place that i just listened to like last night like that was like a year ago <laughs> so i'm like what what are they talking about youtube i i record my appointments but they don't go on the internet because they're for my notes like if it's really egregious then when my wife's looking at it she's like i've got to share this with the world they have to know how they're treating veterans i'm like well okay but you know <laughs> yeah it, yeah, that was bizarre. I mean, e- even if like you're being recorded, you can you can respectfully ask to not be, and you can you can just I don't know. There's yeah. just better ways of doing it. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure you've seen other people handle it better. Yeah. And and not everybody, and honestly, not everybody's super super like open, and they don't act themselves a lot of times when that happens because they're kind of freaked out. Yeah. Um, but I try to prepare prepare them for that when she called because i said well if he does come he has video equipment yeah and i mean i i won't lie about saying that and i said you know the the main thing is just to be prepared for his questions and that's why i i was like he does because she already told me that you were asking about the coordinator i said here's your answers yeah and then you just worry about trying to help him get what he needs yeah but and i said you could politely ask him that to please not videotape you and that was that was what I had given her as far as guidance. Sure. Just from our encounter, but yeah. And I hope I hope you're not offended by that. But that's just that's what I did. That was the only thing that I did. Yeah. No. No. I'm not offended. Like, um, I, I I'm not sure about that that guidance. I I don't I don't think it's necessarily wrong. You can definitely ask to not be recorded, but um, to refuse service because somebody is recording that that is. No. Yeah. I, I no. I never told her to refuse <laughs> service. I just, yeah. Yeah. I just asked. I just told her you can ask not to yeah. be recorded. Yeah. But that's why that's why I said when yeah. they shut the window on you and they were like you're the YouTube guy. And yeah. They shut the window. That was a little strange. Um. So I'm sorry that that happened to you. But I guess if I end up getting a getting and getting a call from someone in regards to this, I'm I'm more prepared. For yeah. Yeah. I'll send it. Why. I'll I'll email you um their statements. I'll get on that and okay. and so you can see what what they actually said. <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah, but yeah, thanks, thanks for clearing that up. I, I, I was hoping that was the case, like, because uh, like as a patient advocate, if you're just like, no, here, let me give you everything I got on the guy. I'm like, man, this sucks. No, <laughs> well, it's just, it's just as a, as a person that works in healthcare. Yeah. Period. Like, yeah. 
our job is to, I mean, we get drilled constantly about patient privacy yeah. and how the only reason why we have access to this is to do our job. Right. And I, and when she asked me that, the first thing was, this doesn't have anything to do with me or caring for this patient. So no, like yeah. this has to do, cause she clearly had mentioned like there was an incident yesterday and I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. And then she asked me about the information and I said, no, I can't. So yeah. anyway, oh, well, there, it was, so it was the day after? I think it was the day after, yeah. Because in their statement, they're, missed... they're claiming it was the same day. They're saying... <sighs> no. <laughs> no. So it's some, from the 8th... Eight... It, was, it was on 3-8... Okay. No, 3-9. 3-9 is actually two days later. Oh, wow. 3-8, um, she sent me a message, a message that um, something happened. Yeah. And then, and I didn't even, I never even looked until like several days later, I saw that a friend of mine was like, did this happen at your VA? I was yeah. like, no, but I know this person and yeah. I heard something happen, but I didn't know how severe it was. Yeah. And then on 3-9 is when she was like, can you give me his info? And I clearly stayed mm. no multiple times. And well, why? So, but they didn't call? Like, they didn't talk to you on the phone? Only the first day when she had asked me, do you have access to a disability coordinator? Right. And so, and then I said, who is this in reference to? Could I ask? Yeah. Or, or, and she said, Michael Nelson. And I said, okay, well, can I call you? And so that's whenever I said, you know, this is a question that comes up. This is, and, and I, I also sent her a little message too. Yeah. Um, yeah, it wasn't much, but we talked after that. And that was when we, when we talked on the phone Never gave her your information. I just confirmed who she was talking about and said, yes, I've been in contact with you before. This is how we're handling this. These are the responses I got from the Office of um, General Counsel. Right. But so that phone call was on the 8th? That was on the 7th. Ah, okay. And then I think that must have been that e that same evening or afternoon you, is that when you visited them? Yeah, because I, I called them okay. uh, I, that afternoon. I, I didn't even know the vet center existed. I was in a, a VIST support group from uh, the Blind Rehab, mm -hmm. and their guest speaker was a guy from the vet center in Pensacola. And I was like, hey, is there one closer to me? And he's like, yeah, there's one in Panama City. So I'm like, cool. So I called them like right after um, that meeting and then talked to Aislinn, and she's like, yeah, you can come on in. We do walk-ins until 4.30. Uh, and I said, well, I needed some assistance to help fill out paperwork because of my vision loss. She's like, yeah, we'll help you fill it out. And then and then it turned into a, a crazy event there when I showed up. So, Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that that happened, but that was all we talked about on the 7th. Um, on the 8th is when she... I reached out telling me something happened, and they. She did say we called the police. Yeah. And I was like, so at that point, I thought, well, you must have went crazy. Honestly, like I, uh. didn't, I didn't ask any questions. I just said, I'm sorry you had to deal with that. Um, and and then on the ninth is when she asked me for your information. So that's the timeline yeah. I have. Okay. Well, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I think another thing, like one of the, you said. If you, if any time you feel unsafe, call the police. I don't know if that's a, a wise advice to give staff like you know because they just because they feel unsafe um doesn't mean that there's actually a threat happening right i, I think it make it make it more and, and, and i may not have said it exactly that way yeah like it, if you feel like you're someone is going to harm you like i mean if you're if you don't have right. if you don't have police presence or know how to handle like if you feel like someone is threatening or going to harm you yeah. I, I you know don't sit there and like freeze and make yeah. yourself a victim i mean if you, right. if you need to call someone yeah um, yeah but I, I, I and but i do also understand that people can can jump i mean that's why we have to train our staff here to right. be very careful but it honestly yeah maybe maybe i sh maybe i sh assumed that she had better training <laughs> than that and and loosely said that comment yeah but i did not say when he shows up automatically called the police that yeah. did not come out of my mouth it was i specifically yeah. told her i've never been a threat and that i never felt like you were ever going to harm anyone like i was like i think he's he's harmless yeah that's yeah. why whenever she said she did call the police i was like whoa he must have acted out yeah. something. Why, why would you assume that like you, you there's, there's... I, I should have i should have because <laughs> then i watched the video and i was like oh they were kind of 
crazy. Yeah, but, um, yeah. There's hundreds. Yeah. There's hundreds of videos of of me on on the internet, and I've never once uh, threatened anybody, or called for threats, or even pretended like like we should anybody. I actually actively go out of my way to call against that and, and encourage people not to use violence and not to use the violence of the state against one another. Like, just let's find a, an amicable way to, to peacefully coexist. Like, that's kind of my whole spiel. <laughs> like, I, I, I've been, I, I've been yeah. beaten, I've been beaten unconscious and I, and I haven't, you know, retaliated in any kind of way where it invokes the violence of the state. You know, I'm still trying to, to work with those people to, to come to a peaceful resolution from what they did to me. You know, it's, it's, yeah. So no, I'm not. I'm not. My days of violence are over. I put that behind me when I got out of the military. You know, and so. I thanks. Thanks for answering. Were you special forces? Yeah. 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 Well, I thank you for you know putting your life on the line and doing what you did, and then trying to you know rise above all that. I'm sorry it's been difficult for you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Uh, I think I, I think I woke up to it too late, you know. I think uh, I realized way late into my my career, like what what the hell are we doing here? You know, we're, like we we became the evil that we were they were supposed to fight. You know, we just raid raid villages in the middle of the night and pull every every male that looked age sixteen and up, you know, out and drug them out into the street. Doesn't matter if the conditions, if it was raining, if there's mud, like put them on their knees and zip cuffs. You know, and like this is like we terrorize villages, like looking for supposed you know tips running down, trying to find bomb makers or whatever. And and I'm like, man, we what are we doing? You know, we just traumatize an entire village of people. And that's, oh, that's hard. And so yeah, it, it yeah, it, I don't know. You know, I, I when people say thank you for your service, I'm like, well, not not my military service, <laughs> maybe my post military service. I'm trying to actually, um, you know make some progress towards freedom and, and encourage people to respect one another and uphold each other's rights, just human rights, you know. And, but. Thanks, Heather. You're welcome. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, she is definitely much more professional than the others. She, unfortunately, was not available on Tuesday, April 4th, when they ambushed Mike at that meeting. Mike went live to YouTube for his safety moments after entering, when an unidentified man approached him and started trying to give him orders, almost exactly like a previous man in a different healthcare lobby. Stick around as we continue to pull these strings and try to unravel the shroud of deception that is surrounding the VA. Thanks for watching. Teo Preso Liber.